What's up, amigos? My name is Ash, and today I want to talk about what steps EA can take to make Battlefield 5's Battle Royale mode great. Even though Battlefield was released back in November, their Battle Royale mode isn't slated to release until March. This was one among a slew of issues that plagued the title, among other problems like their miserable marketing campaign and a delayed release date. Even though Battlefield sales disappointed, there is still a considerable player base battling it out on EA's flagship title. With all that being said, there is but one thing that can take Battlefield 5 from the edge of the proverbial cliff to the top of the gaming mountain. As we all know, that one thing is a mind-blowing, boot-shaking, gun-quaking, battle royale experience. As we have seen, a battle royale can really elevate a game and push them over the edge, bringing in higher sales and a happier player base overall. Both of these have been issues for Call of Duty the last few years, but when they dropped the battle royale mode, it showed that the title may have some fight left in them. And this is exactly what Battlefield needs, and I'm here to tell you how I think they can accomplish that. With grand maps, unparalleled map destruction, and larger player counts, Battlefield was destined to host a battle royale mode. The question is, can EA pull it off? I'll pause right here for a minute. If you haven't seen the what we currently know about Firestorm video, I'll have it linked in the description below and it'll get you up to speed on everything that has been confirmed for the game so far. But for now, let's start with the top three things Battlefield could and should do right in their upcoming Battle Royale mode, Firestorm. While most players get caught up with the 100 player count, I don't really think this is a big deal. It's said that Battlefield will run with 64 players and I think that should be just fine for a Battlefield Battle Royale mode. So for now, we can throw that in the neutral bin until we get a better idea of how the game will run with that high of a player count, as the game's optimization could swing that either way when the game mode finally drops. The first right move we come to is the class system. As most of you know, Battlefield is known for the class system that lives within their multiplayer games. Battlefield games usually have four classes that have unique abilities and gadgets that they can utilize, giving them advantages in specific areas of the game. I think the addition of the class system to the Battle Royale mode would be a nice wrinkle that other games don't currently have. A class system would also add another layer of strategy that squads would have to factor in, which would place a greater emphasis on pre-game communication and preparation. While the class system wouldn't be the exact same, its implementation wouldn't be too difficult. The difference would arise however since in the core game, classes are restricted to specific types of guns. But in the Battle Royale mode, this wouldn't be possible as the player could loot any gun that they wanted. But giving each class specific skills or bonuses while using that class's weapons would be a great way to encourage each class to use the weapon that they are typically associated with. Giving each class a specific aesthetic would also allow players to identify the class of their enemy and plan a strategy on the fly. If you identify your enemy as a scout, odds are he is using a rifle, so rushing him to eliminate his range advantage would be a smart tactic. These strategic moves would add yet another layer of depth to the Battle Royale mode. The more unique layers and strategic depth the EA can add to their take on the Battle Royale mode, the better the game can be. Next up is another staple in the Battlefield franchise, vehicles. Fortnite and Blackout have shown that vehicles can be a solid, balanced part of a Battle Royale game, but vehicles aid in eliminating those cross-map sprints that can kill a good time quicker than a Battlefield marketing campaign. With that being said, Fortnite has shown with their addition of airplanes that vehicles can frustrate and annoy players to no end. A balance in the sector of the game is crucial to their success. Even though Battlefield is known for tanks, planes, and other crazy war machines, I don't think that they will have a place in Firestorm. I think that many will agree that smaller vehicles, such as motorcycles or even the occasional armored car, would be a perfect balance, as it keeps the vehicle aspect of the game intact while avoiding the rage that anyone would feel after being vaporized by a tank in a top 5 situation. The vehicle aspect has been confirmed by EA however as they stated that there will be infantry vehicles and tanks in the battle royale mode. We can only pray that the offensive vehicles aren't overpowered as they could easily break the success of the game type. Finally we come to our last right move EA can make when it comes to Firestorm and that right is the loot, weapon, and equipment systems. Leaning more towards a Call of Duty or PUBG system will be the path to follow for Battlefield here. Unlike Fortnite who has a very basic loot, weapon, and equipment system, I think Battlefield calls for a more complex system, which I think should include attachments for most guns, lethal and non-lethal equipment like infantry and vehicle mines, hand grenades, smoke grenades, and of course you will have your health pickups, which will have various forms separated by effectiveness. Now I assume that Battlefield will probably carry most of the equipment and weapons from multiplayer into the Battle Royale mode, although I'm sure the gun list will be trimmed down significantly.
only to maybe about 15 or so primary weapons because anything over that may be overwhelming to players. The loot system is crucial to the game's success. A great loot system can be very addicting to players. Finding that perfect attachment or the highest class weapon can be very rewarding in the early game. And a more complex system makes looting a more important and far more interesting task, making this area of the mode far more important than most believe. And those were the top three things I hope to see on the right side of the column come game day. Let me know in the comments below if there is something you think I got wrong, right, or just outright left out of the conversation. Now for the cynical portion of the video, the portion of the video where I want to be dead wrong. The three things I hope we won't see in any part of the game come March. We will start with the wrong section with something that most modern games utilize and that is microtransactions. Personally, I think this is an issue that is vastly overblown and it tends not to bother me, but for the good of the community, I pray that EA will make their first good decision in years. Now that doesn't mean don't include a season pass, because I think that would be a great include with this mode. It works beautifully in Fortnite and pretty well in Blackout. It gives players an incentive to level up and complete challenges within the games, unlocking skins, camos, and other aesthetic items for in-game use. It would be great if EA could do themselves a favor and avoid a, um... <laughs> firestorm of controversy. So that's one of the three things, not very game breaking, but it's something that I think will make the game far more enjoyable if left out or done appropriately, which seems impossible at least for EA. The second wrong move that should be avoided is not having the game optimized before launch, or at the very least have the team focus on optimization before releasing additional content. A lack of optimization absolutely ruined PUBG. Once games like Fortnite and later on Blackout dropped, their player base fell off significantly. EA should take this as a warning that if they don't optimize right away, their game will fade away very, very quickly. Many people see a content delay as an awful move, but I think most realistic gamers would rather see the mode take longer so that it can be pristine when it finally releases. Good news on this front is the fact that they didn't force the release of Firestorm to coincide with the game's release in November, plus the fact that the game is slated to launch with 64 players. Whether this number will stick remains to be seen, but reducing stress on the servers in the name of sacrificing player count is a good sign for sure. Finally, we come to the pinnacle of the imperfect, our final and most least desired potential feature in Firestorm, and that is an armor system. This may be a controversial opinion, but at the same time, I know many Blackout players will have my back here. An armor system frustrates players to no end, as it is a feature that increases player damage tolerance far too high, creating battles that feel odd and unrealistic. Realism is something that Battlefield should be striving for with Firestorm, since it's always been a trademark of the Battlefield series, and to carry that into Firestorm will be crucial for the game's success. While an armor system may not be ideal, something like overhealing like Blackout pulled off with the trauma kit would be a nice replacement. For those that don't know, the base health in Blackout is 150, but a trauma kit, a semi-rare item, allows a one-time heal to 200 hit points. Something like this would allow players to get some sort of health advantage through looting while keeping an armor system at bay. I think keeping a greater sense of realism with shorter and more strategic battles is the path Firestorm should follow. And those were the top three things I hope we do not see in the Battlefield's Battle Royale come game day. With that being said, let me know in the comments below if there's something you think I got wrong, right, or just outright left out of the conversation. I know I'm hoping that Firestorm can revive the Battlefield franchise. Let me know in the comments below if you think Firestorm has the capability to do that. That will do it for this video. Make sure you hit like, click, or tap that subscribe button to become the heart of this gaming channel. For more gaming analysis, news, reviews, and opinions, stay here on Ash Heart. And as always, thanks for watching.